Hi guys, hi pet lovers. Thanks for joining Gino's Grooming Channel. Today we're gonna to be working with special needs pets. This is Pushki. He is a 14 year old toy poodle. He's got a few things going on. Of course, he's a little bit older and he's got some skin issues. So he's got little lumps and bumps. Very common to happen to um, elderly dogs, especially poodles. And also Pushki had uh, spine surgery a few years ago. So like open back surgery, a major, major surgery uh, because he stopped being able to walk. Um, so now he's walking, but definitely has a very weak back. So there's a lot of things that we need to do to be very careful when we're working with a special needs pet like this. Um, now for any of you guys out there saying, well, why groom a special needs pet? When you have a coated breed, this coat keeps growing. Yes, as they get older, it can get a little thinner, but if we let it mat up, now we have a medical issue. So um, we have to get through grooming these dogs um, in the gentlest way possible to maintain that coat so that they don't get uh, any medical issues. Now, this uh, video also, it's important to note, is focused a lot on the people who have their dogs getting older and wanna work with their dogs at home. Um, so I'm gonna be going through a full haircut with him. I'm gonna go ahead, get him in the bath, wash him, dry him, and then meet you guys back here because I wanna show you some tips and tricks of working with these types of pets so you can go ahead and attempt to do pet grooming at home with your special needs pet. So again, I'll see you guys back here. After I get him washed, I use hypoallergenic shampoo. I'm gonna blow dry him with professional equipment. You can absolutely use a home blow dryer. Just make sure you don't use it on the heat setting. Okay, so we'll see you back here when we're ready to do the haircut. Okay, well, we are finished with the bath and the fluff out. We wanna make them as fluffy as possible. But again, we're not gonna be pushing our older dogs too much. So if there's a little more curl than you normally would find in a poodle because he didn't wanna to tolerate it too much, that is okay. Um, few things I did find on him, um, and I wanted to mention this is when we last were speaking, I said I was gonna wash him in hypoallergenic shampoo. When I went ahead, got him in the tub and looked at some of his skin issues, I changed my mind and actually used the Zymox enzymatic shampoo and leave-in conditioner because it's really good for bad skin. Um, so I'll make sure to put the description down below. Come take a look, come zoom in and see what happens with Pushki. Now I can see his mommy put some ointment apparently on this scab and what this scab appears to be, again, I can only observe and report, but by looking at other ones, look at this one up here. So it looks like he gets moles and they go ahead and rupture and uh, bleed and cause scabbing. So. Um, you just have to treat that with however your veterinarian recommends that you treat them. Um, but this is very common for older poodles and things like that. So we gotta be really careful when we're clipping this hair, not to play whack-a-mole and get any of those moles while we're clipping. So be aware of that. And any handling with a senior dog, slow, uh, make sure that nothing is creaking or tight um, and that you approach everything slow. So let's get to the meat of the video, which is really giving a special needs dog a haircut. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my cordless clippers. In other videos, I talk about the fact that I do a lot of special needs dogs. This is a very quiet motor um, and I've equipped it with my 30 blade um, because I'm gonna go ahead and use a clipper comb on top of that. The reason I'm gonna use a clipper comb is because we can still get a short with a certain level of clipper comb. Most clipper combs are a little longer than just a blade alone but a blade can hit a mole much easier. We wanna go ahead and do a guide comb to protect these dogs that have moles and bumps and lumps and scabs um, so that we don't go ahead and pull anything off. So I have chosen a number two, um, that is a 3 eighths of an inch um, on my clipper. I check that, make sure everything is seated. And I go ahead and I start the clip. Now most of the time you start a clip at the occiput. So I go ahead, lift up. So everything's out of the way and I stop my clip. Now if you remember there was a mole on the other side, oh here we go, very lightly I'm going over that mole and I'm kind of lifting so that I don't hit it. I can check it, okay good. And now I do the back piece with my clipper. I'm gonna lift him up very gently. I let him sit as long as he wants to sit, but I just have to lift him up for short durations of time to get under his undercarriage, right here. Then down his back leg. Good boy. And I'm always supporting him with my other hand. Now for the remainder of this footwork, I'm gonna see if he wants to sit down. 
How you doing, bud? Are you good? See how I'm letting him sit and I'm able to go around his entire leg. I'm going over to the front chest and front legs. I go all the way up to the throat. We're gonna work on the headpiece in this final part. And this is my first pass. I always do two passes of a haircut. Raising the arm. So you pull back, I release my tension. I know I never tug a war, but I gently hold and get through it. Going down the body, remember I'm about to hit a mole, which I don't want to actually hit, but I'm about to get to it. Let's lift him up and take a look at how we're going to do this. Now, again, there was ointment around it, so there's nothing we could do about that. I see something that I can go ahead and stop. Take my safety scissors. Now, I'm supporting him under his belly so that he doesn't have to stand. I'm just going to cut off what I can. Going down the body. Okay. Good boy. Remember, bad back, so very gentle on lifting those legs. If he wants to sit down, I'm going to see if he does. You want to sit, baby? Okay, is that better? Okay. Now I can work on this leg with him sitting down. Good boy. Down the legs. Be careful of these areas right here. They're thin and can get stuck in your guide comb. Okay, so for my second pass, I actually use my detail clipper. I normally do this for most haircuts, um, is I'll use my bigger clipper, my A5 uh, style clipper, to do the first pass. And then I will go ahead, do my second pass, and at that same time, I'm gonna refine along the body. This is a really quick way to be able to get a haircut done. And when we're talking about special needs pets, speed is definitely important. We don't wanna keep them on the table any longer than we need to. So. The way that the detail clipper works, if you guys watched our clipper um, series, you'll know that I talk about detail clippers that play in the same sandbox. What does this mean? Is that my number two that I used on my A5 clipper, I can now have a compatible number two that fits on my detail clipper. Fits a little differently, slides on, but no big deal. I move this guy to 30 on my detail clipper. These are my wall bravuras. And I go through those lines that I just did all over again. Now for typical haircuts, you wanna go ahead and brush that coat up. Um, what I also do sometimes for my special needs is I can blow dry, but I will actually use a comb because I don't want to brush a mole or any sore or scab. This gives me a little more control. Okay, and so I go through the same exact pattern that I just showed you with the A5, but now with my detail clipper, Get careful of that mole up there. So I'm gonna do this again and I'll meet you guys back here when I'm ready to refine around the paws. Okay, so finish refining. Again, really careful around any sores or moles um, with my detail clipper. So once I've got that, it looks pretty good. I don't see too many stragglers. Now I do my scissor work that's finish work, okay? And that's gonna be mostly anything that's sticking out. Again, these guys are older special needs. I'm just gonna go ahead and check anything that doesn't look quite right. And we're also gonna round the feet. So I'm gonna do one of this, these feet um, and show you how they're supposed to look. But really with my scissors, I go through and anything that's kind of sticking out, not looking good, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off. The clipper's gonna give, give us the structure of the dog. But now, 
just this little bit of a scissor finish. And so what I do with paws, with a special needs, I'm gonna have to do it a different way than, than standing all the time. So I just use my best instincts and I round the foot. Sometimes I take a little coat off the top here. Okay, let's take a look at the back of it. Looks good, nothing's sticking out too bad. Very nice. Okay, so I will meet you guys here when I finish all of my refinements and all of my paw work. Okay, so we have done our refinements. Again, you're not looking for perfection for our special needs, but we can definitely make them healthier, happier, and have a pretty haircut. What we're gonna do is work on his face. Um, now, most dogs with coats um, get a teddy bear face, but with him, because he's a poodle, and because he has all this discoloration, so he gets home groomed by his mom, um, and she scissors all this, but leaves this alone. I'm gonna go ahead, give him a poodle face, give him a cute little top knot, um, and scissor down his ears. Um, but if you guys really wanna look at faces and ears, depending on what kind of breed of dog you're working with um, go ahead take a look at our channel take a look at our videos hopefully you'll find something in there and um, if you don't find something that will help you to do your dog's teddy bear face go ahead set that in the comments so that we go ahead and make sure to address that and get that um, on our channel as soon as possible so we'll see you back here in a few minutes okay so just finishing up some refinements. I gave him a poodle face. If anyone has any questions on doing a poodle face, we do have a video about that. Um, but we took off like 10 years off this guy's face. All of this staining, uh, we were able to get a lot of it off, but don't be too worried. The ones by the eyes are really hard to get off. Um, you don't wanna go ahead and shave too close around there. But we go ahead, take a look. We've done his entire body, pretty much with him sitting down so that we didn't affect his back at all. We were very careful that if we did have to lift him up, we're always supporting him with one hand under his belly um, so we can do our work and then make sure that he gets to sit down whenever he's ready so that he's comfortable throughout the groom. So it does take a little longer um, to groom special needs dogs, but definitely very satisfying because this guy's gonna be so much happier. His coat is gonna be able to stay healthy and not mat up for quite a while, especially with the length that we took. We really did good about not hitting any of those moles, um, not causing him to bleed in any place on his body. And if that does happen to any aspiring groomers or home groomers that are doing that, it's okay. Just make sure you take care of the mole that is hit or bleeding as your veterinary recommends. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining. Thanks for meeting Pushki. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up. Subscribe uh, to our channel for more like it. We're going to see you next time. Say bye, Pushki. Bye. bye.